Hi, I'm Kent Hatcher, Certified Ergonomist here at Human Tech. In this month's issue of our Ergo Accelerator, I wrote a piece on ergonomic handles. The reason that I wanted to do this was because there, there's still an overuse of the term ergonomic to describe handles out there in the marketplace. Unfortunately, there is no governing body that controls the use of the term ergonomic. So it gets applied in a lot of different situations. So what I wanted to do today was to show you some practical real-life examples on how to apply proper hand tool selection guidelines. There are three main pillars of hand tool design selection criteria, and these hold true for both power tools and for manual hand tools. The first one would be handle length. So here's an example of a box cutter, and you can see the length of the handle here. Although it's sufficient for my hand, a hand that's any bigger than mine is simply not going to fit and there's likely going to be a contact stress created on the edges of the hand, obstructing blood flow and increasing the chance of developing an injury. So that's the first pillar, handle length. The handle length should be about five and a half to six inches in order to accommodate the largest male's hand. The second pillar is handle diameter. The handle diameter of any tool should ideally be one and a half inches or, or right around there. That will accommodate the fifth percentile female's hand to be able to get all the way around it in a full power grip. In addition, the handle should not have sharp edges like you see here because that also creates mechanical irritation, obstructing blood flow and increasing the chance of developing an injury. The third pillar of hand tool selection has to do with tool versus target and the orientation of the handle relative to what you're working on. If I hold this example here still, this X-Acto knife, you can see that when I'm going to be cutting on a horizontal surface, my wrist goes into an ulnar deviation. Okay? The same thing for these garden shears here. If I'm cutting on a flat surface, you can see the awkward posture that my right wrist goes into. Ideally, when we're talking about tool versus target, there should be the ability to keep your hand in the handshake position, right? So you can see in this particular tool, this is a, a nice gardening tool, the handle length is appropriate, the handle diameter is appropriate with no sharp edges, and it's oriented to keep the wrist in as neutral a position as possible when working in the yard. So there you have it. Those are the three main pillars. That, that's the dirt on hand tool selection guidelines. If you are able to get a grip on these selection guidelines, you will have no trouble at all selecting the right hand tool. I'm Kent Hatcher. Thanks for watching.